Hello and welcome to exploring, or rather summarizing, quantitative variables using Minitab part one. I split this video into two just because alone one part would be just a little bit too long. As you can see on my left I have Minitab Express open because this will be a Minitab Express video and I have open for this uh, example pile chapter three examples which you can find on Blackboard right above this video along with the Word document I'm using here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create. So the first thing we're going to look at is calculating the mean and the standard deviation for the uniform variable which you'll C and C1. So how you're going to calculate uh, most of the things that you're going to see in Minitab is under the statistics menu which I've already opened for you. So click on statistics. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the describe menu and then we're going to look at descriptive statistics. Now it's going to ask you, hey, which variable would you like to do this to? Notice there's an optional grouping variable if you have something that you need to split your data by. We're going to do this in the second video, but for now we have our variables appearing in separate columns with no relationship between them. As it says up here, all data are in one column, so we want to throw uniform in there. And the next thing we got to do is we got to tell Minitab which data we would like from this, or rather which statistics we would like to have summarized from this piece of data. So we're going to hit the statistics tab and right now it has a bunch of stuff selected that we don't really need. So you're going to need to uncheck a bunch of these boxes. Doo, doo, doo. This is the funnest thing to watch. So now I just have the mean and the standard deviation which was the things that I would like. If you want you can mess with the display a little bit like if you want a graph as well when you're doing this we're not going to do that we're just going to do the mean and the standard deviation because that's all we're doing here we're just doing some numerical describers of our data. We're going to hit OK and it produces this little table for you. I'm going to copy it over just like we've seen previously. You can copy this as an image or just copy it as a table itself. I'm going to copy it as a table. Sometimes when you paste it as a table it doesn't come out so nice looking just so you're aware. Eh, eh. I don't like how this looks. Oh well, too late now. <laughs> so if you hate this you can copy it as an image and it'll look more like what you see in the nice clean version of Minitab. Alrighty. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a five number summary. So hopefully if you look through your notes you know the five statistical values that show up in your five number summary. So we're going to go back to describe under the statistics tab. Click on that and then go over to the descriptive statistics option. Click on that. We're going to put our variable in here. Notice we've switched over to looking at symmetric. I'm just double clicking to get that in there. If you have the select button down here you can highlight it and then hit select depending on which version of Minitab Express you're running that will either be there or not there. Now we need to go over to statistics and select the stuff that's in the five number summary. Okay so there's five numbers and now I've got them all. So it starts from the minimum, the first quartile, the median, then the third quartile, and then the maximum. And Minitab rather nicely will put these in order for you as well so you don't have to worry about was well, I going to put the median first for no reason whatsoever? No, of course not. It's going to do it in a nice natural way. There's your five number summary. Cool. Alright, so we need to copy this over just like we did with the other one. Maybe this one won't look so bad. Come on Word. Oh, tell me this didn't freeze. Okay, oh, I got worried over nothing. Good times. There we go. So there we have our values. And I've previously seen some people um, in other classes get a little confused when looking at Minitab Express and thinking, oh, okay, so you have my output in Word, but I can't get back to anything I've done previously. So if you're worried about um, getting back to some of the answers you've gotten previously uh, in Minitab Express, if you go back to home, and tell it you want the navigation bar. This is also how I look back through your work that you turn in on Minitab. You'll notice that it has a navigator back here that will take you back to your previous things that you've done like what we did in number two and there's what we did in number three. So you don't lose anything it's just that it hides it. It only keeps the current one being displayed. Anyway, so let's make ourselves a histogram. So we've done some numerical summaries of data. Now let's look at making some visual summaries or uh, some graphs. So naturally we're going to click on the graphs tab. Cool. The first graph we're going to make is a histogram. Now a histogram is easily and often confused with a box plot but with one very significant difference. Let's throw a uniform in there and then we'll hit OK. Notice there's no options in here because Minitab Express gives you the options after creating the graph. I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. Hold on just a second. Oh my gosh. Sometimes the way this organizes it I'm a little annoyed with. There we go. So there's our histogram. 
Um, if you've never seen a histogram before, it's a little bit different. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's absolutely not the same as a bar graph, but you might think it is simply because it's got bars in it. So as you look along the horizontal axis on the bottom, I'm hoping you see these values appearing. That's because we're doing this on quantitative data. We only do bar graphs to categorical data. And the big thing that distinguishes a bar graph from a histogram is that histograms are on quantitative data and bar graphs are on non-quantitative data. So when you're looking at a bar graph, your bars really shouldn't touch because your categories on this categorical variable are completely unrelated. So they really shouldn't be touching. A yes isn't right next to a no, as we may know. Um, no with a K. So, you know, bad jokes. But when you look at quantitative data, you can have values that are literally right next to each other. So it makes sense that your bars be touching. Now, the way this has arranged it, it's done it in a grouping and counting manner. So I'm going to leave my, you've been watching my mouse move around. You've seen it already do this, but I'm going to leave my uh, mouse on this little almost centerish guy. And you notice it says value 15, bin 46.25 to 48.75. The bins are the widths of the bars, and they're all the same width, so that everything is nice and uniform. You can make them without the same width if you want to, so that they're different, but you know, most people don't do that. Nice uniform, kind of keeping things arranged. So what it's doing is it's taking every single value in the uniform variable, and asking how many of those are between 46.25 and 48.7. And if they're in there, they fall in this bin, and we count them. So there are 15 values that did so. So as you look at this, the width of the bins that make the width of the boxes, and then how many values follow in that bin, give you the height. So it's a way of organizing and condensing large data sets into a graphical visual version of it by making these number values. Now, if you don't like the style of this histogram, this is the plain one, you can click on the histogram and you'll get some options you can play with as well. So I'm going to click on graph elements first. So there's the same things as we've seen before, the title and footnote that we saw with the bar graph as well. You can also do data labels for this if you want to have the tops of the bars labeled like we've seen with the histograms. I actually kind of don't, sorry, not histograms, bar charts. I actually kind of don't like them for histograms, but you know, there it is. Um, and some of the other things you can play with is the orientation and uh, one of the things that you might want to consider doing is if you don't like the bin size used here, you can also go to binning, come on, mine's slowing down for some reason, and tell it you want to change how it's labeling things. Now right now I have it labeling the midpoints of bins, um, that's not my favorite, I usually like cut point which is just the uh, the edge of where they end up being cutoffs, so to speak, of, oh, this is the cutoff between the bin below it and the bin above it. And you can also tell it you want fewer bins. So I'm going to actually change the number of bins down to something ridiculous. I'm going to do 10. 10 is going to be a little bit too small for this data set. But there you go. See how it changes the way the graph looks. Now this does look more uniform. It looks like most of my values are around about the same, or rather that the heights or the frequency of my values are about the same. So I'm now going to copy my histogram into number four because, well, it says make a histogram. If you don't want to mess with the bin size in your assignment, you do not have to. So don't worry about that. You can use Minitab's default and I will not judge. So there's our beautiful histogram showing up in our Word document. Woo hoo hoo hoo. Alrighty. Next up, we're going to make the first of our multiple displays. So we're going to create a single display that shows the histograms for skewed left, symmetric, skewed right, all in the same graph using the same scale and bid size. And the reason we want to use the same scale, that's the y direction, is so that, and sorry, bin size, that's the x direction, is because then you can actually compare your values. If you're using different scales on a graph, on two different graphs, it's really hard to compare your values because, well, you know, just because one is taller doesn't mean it's bigger if they're on a different scale. So let's make ourselves a single display of multiple histograms. So we're going to go back to histogram. <clears throat> we're going to do simple with multiple y value variables. Sorry, I almost said values. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, you probably, yeah, okay. So I'm going to put the variables in there that I want. And again, Minitab Express likes you to have a very simple input menu, and then you can do any changes you might want afterward. So we're going to hit OK after this and then it produces our multiple graphs. Now this one is nice because Minitab automatically has chosen 
sorry, Minitab Express for that default automatically chooses to keep all of your scales the same. So this whole scale and bid size is going to be the same. It doesn't matter so much for Minitab Express. When I go through this example in Minitab, you have to do a bunch of stuff to make it do that. So this one automatically does. What you should do at this point is now that they're all on the same scale, look at how different the shapes are. Clearly the skewed left, skewed right, and symmetric all look very different. However, when you look at their approximate means, this one looks to be about 50. Well, this one's probably a little bit below 50, and this one's probably a little bit above 50. So you can clearly see that their centers are different, and their shapes are different, and their spreads are probably different since they have such differing shapes. Let's copy our graph over to our number five. There we go. There's our single graph with multiple in them. And the reason you want to do this is it makes it very easy to compare. So if you're wondering why on earth would I want to throw three of them on together? Now I can look at them and say, oh, this is how they're different. This is how they're similar using one image. And then we're going to do something similar for six and seven. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do the five number summary and then the box plot. And if you want, you can actually create multiple box plots through the same steps too. I actually like multiple box plots a little bit better than histograms, but some people don't, so I didn't, uh, well, most people don't, so I left that off of here. Let's make the five number summary for the symmetric variable. Maybe we'll go hog wild and not do what this says and do it for all of the variables so we can see <coughs> how it compares to what we observed in number five. So we're gonna go back to statistics. We're gonna go down to describe. We're going to hit descriptive statistics. <clears throat> All data are in one column, so let's do the one for symmetric. And then I want to tell it that I want the five number summary. So remember, I have to deselect all the stuff that is not in the five number summary. So I don't need the mean, I don't need the standard error of the mean, I don't need the standard deviation, I don't need the number in our sample and the number missing, I just need these middle five. And I'm going to hit OK. So there is the information for the symmetric variable. I'm hoping, um, copy you notice that it is different from the one we've had previously, the one for the uniform variable. Come on. There she goes. Oh, that's super weird. Hold on a second. I appear to be suffering from word problems. It only wants to paste it as text. That's horrific. I don't want that. I want, Then I'll copy it as an image since it won't let me. For some reason it doesn't want to let me do a table. Take that word. I win. So now I'm going to go back to my home screen and my navigator and go back to the um, descriptive statistics we did for uniform. Oh, I did the symmetric one there. I have this in here twice. Why did I do that? Huh. Oh, cool. It's the same as itself. That's like the silliest thing I've ever done. So what I was going to do is I'm going to do this for uniform and then compare the two so you can see, yes, these appear to have about the same median, but their spreads are very different. But that evidently didn't happen. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that this says uniform and do this again. So we are going to go back to here and then change this. Here we go. Describe, descriptive. Let's throw uniform in there so that we have the uniform one to compare. Turn off all the stuff I don't want. Good to go. There we go. So now you can take a look at this and be like, oh yeah, their medians are pretty close. Eh, it's not really close. They're kind of far apart, actually. And then their quartiles, you can really start to see this spread. Like, this is pretty even. And although this is even, it's much larger, which makes sense when you look at the histograms for these. Clearly, I have more values near the center or the median in the symmetric data. So I'm looking right here. All the stuff's kind of close to the median than I do here where, oh no, my median's a little bit bigger than 50 and I have, I have values frequently everywhere, so it's not the same. So it makes sense that when you look at the quartiles, there's quite a difference between them. And it just keeps getting larger. Once you get out to the minimum, they're very, very different. Same thing with the maximum. <clears throat> All right, last but not leastly, we're going to create ourselves a box plot. I'm going to turn off the navigator again just because I have only so much space we can use. So we're going to create a box plot for the symmetric data. So we're going to go back to graphs. We're going to go over to box plot. And since I'm just doing a single variable, I want to do simple. If you wanted to do multiple variables, you would want to do multiple variables down below with simple as well, which we're probably going to do a little bit later. We'll throw symmetric in there and hit OK. And there's our box plot for symmetric. 
So I kind of like this one because it's pretty easy to see where the outliers are and if you hover over it, sorry, it doesn't want to stay, you can see exactly which values are your outliers and it's pretty easy to tell that they are going to be outliers because remember outliers occur if they're more than one and a half times the IQR past the third quartile or below, I should have said above, or below the first quartile. So if you look at the interquartile range, which is about this big, yeah, so one and a half of that would be like, one would be about here, and then half of it would be about here. So yeah, this value is fine, but these two are not. So I look down at quartile one, and I want to subtract from it about this length. So I'd end up about here, so that's one, and then a half would be about here. So yeah, this value would end up being inside and not considered outlier, but these two definitely would be because it's too far. So that's one quick way to do this. So here's a nice box plot. Let's copy this guy over to our Word document. Come on. And then for fun, I'm going to do a multiple box plot. You don't have to do this for this assignment. So if you're already like, oh, this is too much video, I'm done, uh, you can turn it off now. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the multiple box plot because I kind of like it and for no other reason. So I'm going back to box plot and I'm choosing the multiple y values. Sorry, sorry, multiple y variables. This is uh, going to allow you to compare all three of these together. So I'm going to throw the symmetric guy in there, the skew left, and the skew right. And I'm going to hit OK. Ha 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 ha. Cool. Let me get the ribbon out of there so this can we have a little bit more room. All right. So this makes it very clear that when you look at this data, yeah, my medians are about the same. But clearly there's an increasing trend here, like left is the smallest, then comes symmetric, and then right is then the largest. And when you look at the shape of them, they're displaying the shapes that they're describing. So symmetric, yeah, when I look at Q3, it's about the same length Q1 is from the median. And when I look at the mi minimum and the maximum, or the length of the whiskers, and how far they are from not only the boxes, but the center, it's the same for symmetric. But when you play that same game with skewed right, you don't get that result. And if you're having a hard time picturing that, look at the length of just the whiskers, right? So this whisker is much shorter than that whisker. The longer whisker, where things more are more spread out, is on the right side, just like we were seeing with the histogram, and just like you see with skewed right data. And the same thing happens with skewed left. Notice my left whisker, or my lower whisker, is much, much longer than my uh, upper whisker or my right whisker, depending on how you view your data. So when I say upper, I mean it because it's in the larger values, not because it's above it. So this whisker is much shorter, and so that means I'm more stretched in the left direction or the lower direction than I am in the upper direction or the higher direction. So clearly this is going to be skewed left. Now if you don't see that, you can change the orientation on this guy, and then it's a little easier to see. Yeah, so now when I say skew left, oh yeah, the stuff to the left, that's longer than the stuff to the right. And when I think of skewed right, oh yeah, the stuff to the right is longer than the stuff to the left. And symmetry almost looks like a perfect reflection on each side. This guy looks a little bit wider, but not by much. Okay, so that's the first part of our video on exploring and summarizing quantitative data.